facility construction. What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook with your host, Comp, and... Worn Out Leather Wallet. And today's film is... Hellraiser Judgment 2018. Smellraiser. Oh, wow. oh, so whoops. it was this year. Wow. Yes, Hellraiser oh. Judgment. Detectives, Hellraiser. detectives uh, Sean and David Carter are on the case to find a gruesome serial killer terrorizing the city. Oh, Joining God. forces with Detective Christine Edgerton, they dig deeper into a spiraling maze... Of Starry horror, Heather good lord, Danny. Let me finish. That may not be of this world. You really want to get out of here? I don't blame you, but come on. Directed by Gary J. Tunnicliffe, uh, written by Gary J. Tunnicliffe, starring Damon Carey, Randy Wayne, Alexandra Harris, as well as who? Who was it you just said? Uh, Heather uh, Heather Langenkamp. What was, a f- you know from uh, Nancy Palmer from um, What a fucking Nightmare. joke! Goodness gracious! What a movie! She was in it for five seconds, but I'm telling you, those are the best five seconds of the movie. I can't say the word yikes enough about this movie. Holy mackerel. Is I mean, it? it wasn't that bad. I expected it to be a lot worse. I really did. Here's actually. the thing. This is... Uh, um, okay. Uh, I've only seen maybe three Hellraiser movies before this one. I've okay. seen... Um, well, obviously, I saw Hellraiser 1. I think I've seen part two. I'm not sure. We we reviewed part two. We did. Okay, so then we saw both. Yeah. Hell, so we did both Hellraiser Hellraiser movies, right? Yeah, and I've seen like bits and pieces of other ones. Yes, we, we did terrible. see both of them. The second one wasn't as good as the first one. That I remember. Um, yeah, but it, it had cool. Bad, but it had great set pieces. The second one, because um, yeah. they had that maze and stuff. Anyway, uh, and then I think I saw Hellraiser Deader or something like that. Like okay, which I thought had an okay ending. Uh, and then I saw parts of Hellraiser three where like the Cenobites go into a disco club and they just like kill everybody and it looks <laughs> Is that real? Yeah, well I mean it's like a club, like techno club or metal club. You know in, in movies it sounds like so out of context, it sounds so funny. <laughs> no, it's like a it's a scene where they go inside of this club and you know how in movie for some reason in the nineties, cause like 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 Blade. Well, yeah, no, but that, that's that's totally opposite because in Blade, they play techno music, and people listen to techno music in clubs. You know what I mean? Yeah. In in 90s movies, for some reason, they'll have metal playing in clubs. And I'm like, who? Yeah, right, are you talking right, right. About? I've never seen that, re- unless it's like... I a- would love to see that. That would no, be awesome. I would, I would like that, too, but I, it's always dance music. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, not it's like always fucking, terrible dance music. They don't music. play, like, you know, Skindred or some fucking metal shit up there. I don't even know why I named that musician, even though he's, Skindred. like... Skindred. Yeah, he's like a musician. Anyway, but it's like, uh, you never hear that. You know, it's like, what are you talking about? But anyway, I th- I'm not sure. Sh- I could be wrong. It could have been a dance club. But, like, Pinhead and the rest of the Cenobites, like, destroy the club. And I thought it was pretty cool. But that was part three, so we should review that one day. So, like, what? Everybody in the world sees them? <laughs> I guess in that one, they just go into a club and they start killing. That that movie had one of the Cenobites. It was a guy who was a DJ. And he was able uh-huh. to pr- projectile CDs out of his head and kill that's, people with them. That's dumb. It was a real sign of the times. Anyway, that uh, and I also, I, I really wanted to do Hellraiser Revelations because I think it was half found footage, which already means yikes. That's the one that has the uh, the first time it's not Doug Bradley, right? Right, it's it's um, okay. it's um, Sandwich Head. He's like, a, a, he looks a little tubbier. I thought he was actually a black guy playing Pinhead, which would have okay. been interesting. But apparently that movie was so bad, so I was like, let's do a good one. I was not instead of that one, well, I was wrong about that, but I was like, let's do a different one besides that one, because that one I know is terrible, so we can make jokes about mm-hmm. it. But uh, we decided to, I decided to pick this one just because I heard, you know, it came out, it's new, and uh, right. I, I can't say I'm like a huge fan of the Hellraiser series. The, the guy that did it, t- uh, Gary Tunnic- Tunnicliffe, or I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. That guy did all the makeup effects on like all of these movies, pretty much, except for the first two. And he also plays the auditor, so which is pretty cool. He plays the, the guy. German one. Yeah, he plays a German guy in this movie, which is cool. He looks like um, uh, Paul Schaefer in Hell, like you know David. He Letterman's also did piano uh, the Candyman makeup. And I really thought Danny would laugh at that joke. Um, yeah, he's very good. Obviously, he's he's clearly good. And I guess <laughs> you know the company just said, okay, here's how much was the budget for this movie? I think it was like three hundred and fifty. Oh, I was going to say $35,000, because I would believe that, too. Um, so uh, Let me look it up. <coughs> this movie, no, I'm sure it's 350000 I mean, like... 350000 It looks yeah. like it's shot on, uh, on like, uh, video... Like, not video camera, I'm sorry. It, it looks like it's shot on, like, DSLR, like cameras. You know, little cameras yeah. and stuff. It just looks like it. Here's the thing with this movie. 
uh, before we get into the, obviously we're going to spoil this movie. Uh, the movie spoiled itself, trust me, it stinks. <laughs> but uh, there are positives and negatives to the movie. To me, the negatives far outweigh that. Um, right. Because I here's the thing: what when you think of um, Heck Razor, what do you th- what do you think these movies are supposed to be about? Like, what what are they supposed to be about to you? I mean, I read I read the book. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, it's a short story, but it gets so into like you know the idea of this guy trying to open the <coughs> fucking box, and he's sitting there for like months and like years like studying how can you open this thing and then in the movie it's like random people just touch it and it opens like so it's like it gets rid of the whole mysticism sort of I feeling know, and of I it. think is I know it's like it's supposed there's supposed to be like a Lovecraftian sort of feel to these films like you're seeing exactly. horrors that you don't know about and they kind of caught that with the first movie the first movie you could tell like it didn't really have a huge budget uh, and I don't know how much it covered from the books to the film but yeah, I mean, it definitely changes shit. But it's like, uh, but it's a small, it it's a small story. Feeling. You can tell it's a small story built in a larger world. And at least yeah. in the second one, I think they gave him more money because you can actually see them walking around in hell or whatever dimension they're in. I guess it's a hell dimension. You got to see him. You got to see Paul Bradley become Pinhead. Yeah, remember, and it was like, like cool. Like it was cool. It was like the movie sucked, but it was like cool visuals and stuff. Like you know, and then they killed like Pinhead really cheaply in that movie for some reason. Yeah, now it's just like even even the lines they use like Jesus wept and like yeah, they just do uh, that. So so I bet you they did that line so people who saw this at you know theaters. I guess I, I don't. I doubt they played this a lot in theaters they probably just had a screening so like the real yeah. like the real dumb no fuck. i think it went straight to video so like real dumb fucks gonna go oh my god you see jesus oh my god oh jesus and they're doing backflips in the and theater. like uh, we have such sites to show you it's like they're not gonna just say their catchphrases every time they come out like, i don't know it's kind of like you gimmicky. almost you almost wish you'd see like pinhead like every five minutes will ho- pull out a notepad of all his greatest lines and just start reading them and he has like <laughs> He has like he, three of them. He has to put on glasses, but since he's in hell, he has to put reverse glasses. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Or he has to put on glasses that like have spikes on one end that stab into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's a new guy playing Pinhead. Uh, what's his name? Um, Paul T. Taylor. Uh, you know what? He's decent. He's pretty good. I thought he did a good job. He did a good job. Essentially, he's sort of cosplaying as Doug Bradley. Doug Bradley, I guess he really can't because you know when we when we saw the first two, I was like, hey, Doug Bradley's pretty good. He has like the sort of air of like an English actor, you know, like a thespian. Yeah. And he like brings this sort of gravitas to the role. This is basically how this is how um how uh, how that guy who plays Jason all the time feels about himself in the role. Meanwhile, this guy Doug Bradley <laughs> right, can actually right, right. like I'm sure he thinks oh, I'm as good as Doug Bradley playing Pinhead. Um, but like, <laughs> you can say that about Robert England playing Freddy because you know what they they put something. Robert England is Freddy. Yeah, you like, can't 100%. you can't replace him. <laughs> and um, he, yeah, you can never have anyone else be Freddy. But this like, guy is good. Him. I don't know who played them in the last movie. All I know is I saw a photo of him and I was like, that can't be right. He looked yeah, it looks pretty bad. He looked like you know the guy who played him in the last movie, Revelations. I didn't see the movie. I just saw like photos of it. He looks mm-hmm. like you know when they put a German sausage in that sort of. Uh, strings in it and it's like sticking yeah. out of the strings that's what he looks like because he's kind of chubby and his face is whatever anyway so uh, anyway this movie starts out with um, the uh, what the hell is the guy named the auditor who's played by the director very good I like his portrayal of the character he's very good yeah if anything if anything his character is the only uh, it's a little silly a little lighthearted. yeah him and Pinhead are the only characters worth watching uh, in this movie uh, anyway, so going back to what I was saying about what, what these movies mean, it sort of seems to me like these movies have started to become like Saw in a way that right. they 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 put these like cops in danger. So, like I know the Hellraiser Deader one I saw. There was actually mm-hmm. two Hellraiser movies that I think had a joining like a short um, I don't know, like a duology, what, like an actual like, continuation. Yeah, it was like story? a du- it was a duology, I think. I'm not I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. That I don't I didn't see that one, but I saw the Hellraiser Debtor and um it was a cop. And I'm watching this one and it's about cops as well with serial killers. And I understand serial killers gives you a good venue to deal with, you know, you know, hell and all that shit. Anyway, yeah. this movie starts out with uh, Pinhead and the Auditor and they're talking as you know, I'm telling you from the first frame, 1 second in when I saw uh-huh. that special effect of the the the, the puzzle box, and it looked right. so cheap, I was like, "Oh no, I'm in big trouble." Because I knew that shit was gonna—I <laughs> I knew it was gonna be bad as soon as I saw that effect. 
And then they show right. Pinhead, and I was like, okay, he looks all right. And the auditor looked cool. <laughs> and um, yeah, see, the, movies the vomit scene was pretty gross. I was eating. Yeah, like, was a, here's the thing with this shit. Okay, the first like ten minutes, uh, eight, eight, eight or so minutes of this movie. This is like uh, they're trying to shock you and be grotesque, and there is grotesque stuff in it. But it feels yeah. like something that like the fucking uh, um, like Dylan Klebold and El- Eric Harris would have been jerking off watching before they oh, the did any crazy shit. Yeah, because whatever. it's like so edgy. You know what I mean? It's like, oh man, yeah. look, hey, yeah, look, yeah, this yeah. big fat guy. He's eating uh, all the sins he retyped on on paper. But oh, wait a minute. He and put ch- oh no wait a minute he put children's tears on it uh oh oh watch out the edges on that oh boy that's that's some spooky shit right people like this is yeah. like something you uh, this is like something like him and his friends were like the guy the guy whoever wrote it this. reminded me of a movie we saw um it was a I don't even remember it was basically one of these found footage things it was about these it was like during the time of like Nut House or that stupid one <laughs> that we got in trouble. For. What? Oh, murder set pieces and nut bag. Yeah, it was one of those types of movies. And <laughs> nut like, house. I, I don't remember. And but like, house. it was like it reminded me of that Story kind of Michael thing, Jackson. like just trying to be like yeah, trying to be AG. like offensive and shit. Like, but it, it did an okay job. It was just like the only know. movie that that to me that was trying to be offensive and it actually worked, but not didn't offend me, but didn't feel oh cheap. whore mangler. No, that's just stupid. That was funny. No, I'm talking about a Serbian film. Like you can tell, every oh, yeah. scene in that movie was supposed to offend you, and it did it. But it didn't like it wasn't. It didn't feel cheap like this movie. And right, like, right, right. but anyway, so they they find some the order. <clears throat> apparently, they give you an address to this house. Here's how low these movies have become. Like this you, house is the the address of the first movie. Okay. Oh, it is. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So okay, so what I was about to say was like, like this is where where these movies have become, where you just go to a fucking house and then you go to hell. That's what it is. Like you can't. Well, the first movie they open the box in the house, so yeah, they close the fucking that... box at the end of that one, don't they? Yeah, I mean, there's no logic. It doesn't matter. Well, it's the same right. way that like uh, Michael Myers, a normal human, keeps coming back, and then eventually he's like a demon or something stupid, like. You know. Uh, pff, anyway, so they they basically torture this um, pedophile. Um, the auditor tells him, and then they, then they, um, oh boy, they have him, uh, what are they, they have that fat guy, the assessor, come out, and he eats it, he's this guy with, uh, who's, like, shirtless, and he's overweight, and he's wearing a Very suit sexy. jacket for some reason, he eats the paper, and then he pukes it up, and, and then that vomit, which is pretty grotesque, that was pretty gross, goes into yeah. another room where these three women with their humongous breasts are hanging out. And no faces. And here's the thing, too. In hell, apparently, like, women could be naked, but they got to wear underwears because they don't want a Me Too incident going on in hell, I guess. Right. Like, what imagine the, the Imagine the suits against um, Pinhead. <laughs> He's like, well, uh, I didn't mean for that to happen when I touched her <laughs> accidentally. Oh, what sights then, I have to show you. know, the uh, assessor drinks the children's tear and passes out, and you see Bill Cosby driving <laughs> one. <laughs> I should have used this on my own victim. Oh, I would love that movie with fucking Bill Cosby and Pinhead. Can you imagine then, like, Pinhead's like, you've done many bad things. I should, like, deepen my and voice in this see, episode. It's, like, produced by Harvey Weinstein. Hey, but guess, guess who produced this film? Who? Bob Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein's brother. <laughs> really? Yeah, you didn't see that? That's the first thing that stuck out. Yeah, of course. That's why it was that's probably where like I bet you at the last second he's like, Tell those actresses to put the underwear on. I don't want to get well, in says, trouble. Excuse it me. says um Michael Le- Lehigh. No, it, it definitely says Harvey Wein- uh Bob Weinstein though. That's his brother. They, they were the ones that started the Weinstein company, so Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that made no sense that these girls had, like, their torn-up faces and they weren't underwear in hell. I don't know what the fuck yeah. the point is. Obviously, the point was to stare at these ma- uh, humongous malonkers on their chests, but mm-hmm. then they're in black underwear. Like, what the fuck? It, it's just it's just so edgy. It's you know, just it's, so it's to cover the sin of their v- vaginals. So they give them big penises. Who g- it's hell. Who cares? Like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> with- you know what I mean? It's hell, Danny. It's hell. Why do you got to wear underwear in hell? Like, what's the point? You have to tell me. It's so stupid. And then they have, like, these um, overweight women or older women in their 40s. This is probably why... Harvey Weinstein wasn't part of this because he couldn't put young girls in this movie. I found it kind of hot, the well, they, way that they were it licking says, him uh, and stuff. It says, well, they have to wash you. And then for some reason, I thought they were eating the guy because then it cuts away. And I was like, wait a minute, then they just like show somebody vomit? Why the fuck are they cutting away? The, obviously, they show it. It's, they're just licking them. 
They were um, licking him like cats. I kind of liked it. it <laughs> this it movie, me on a little that this part. movie looks okay. No, I thought about it too. It'd be pretty great, but like this looks like a like a bad like Nine Inch Nails video. Like at the opening with the <laughs> with, like I was waiting for Trent Reznor to come out, like walk out and be like, oh, well, I'm doing like a Marilyn Manson voice. Anyway, it's just like a real, like if you look at a Marilyn Manson music video now that he makes recently because he has like five dollars yeah. to make them, that's what they look like. Like, I don't know. Listen, Danny, I'm not. I'm not kidding. I was watching MTV like we in the wee hours of the night. I haven't night. seen any of his recent. They're really stuff. embarrassing. They're so because he has no money to make videos. You know what I mean? He's a millionaire, yeah. obviously, but he does not going to use his own money. He'll probably give him like. 50. He doesn't need money to do it, though. He's an artist. I mean, well, I Danny, remember trust, the early you, stuff. When you did. see these videos, you will say yes. He does need money for these videos because it's shot with a DSL camera, like a DSLR. And the thing is, yeah. you can make DSL like the. Some of the shots in this movie look great because, you know, they're shot right. really well with a DSLR, but you can tell it's DSLR. And there's, like, a Marilyn Manson video where he's, like, um, and he's, like, in front of a podium screaming, and it's so yeah. cheap. And I was, like, I, I got embarrassed. I mean, he's richer than me, and he's fucked more women than I ever have or ever yeah. will. And I was still embarrassed. I was, like, man, he really, like... Those those they he really fucked up or something something happened and then he he took he his went, hatred he went out a on a little overboard on the drugs yeah obviously. then he uh, he fucked over Danny in the future after I saw that um, yeah it's it's there's just something too edgy about the way the music video anyway so the whole point of this film is that there's a guy um, there's a serial killer called the Preceptor and I pretty much positively called it out halfway during the movie oh you knew it was the the uh, yeah because it, listen this movie has only five characters in it <laughs> I mean there's yeah there's three cops. And there's the two uh, Cenobites that have large talking roles. Besides the pedophile and the man who gets killed, um, mm-hmm. these this movie is so fucking cheap. And the wife, ah, who cares about her? This movie is so fucking cheap. Holy mackerel, is it cheap? They have three cops. They'll show the outside of a of a of a police department, and then you never see anywhere else inside this police department. And then these three yeah. cops are in this one room. That has wood paneling, like the inside of a fucking like a uh, station, like not a station wagon, like like a uh, like a. Uh, I mean, that's like unfortunately, this the budget <laughs> on this movie definitely shows. And, and then they had a shot. Remember when they go into the um, the park and there's like guys' hands that are severed and they're like um, tied yeah, together with, eyes and with eyeballs and inside. There's a police officer standing next to them. You you don't see his face because his face is off camera. Because I bet He's you like they, a mannequin. I bet you they couldn't get him a fucking cop hat. They just told him to put on a blue shirt. That's how cheap it is. I was like, man, that's bad. And just yeah. to remind you that this is a police station, they'll play sound effects of people walking around in the background, even though they never walk out of their office. Now, listen, I can't blame them because they don't have money for it. Listen, I've dealt with production that have no money. But it's just like, what? this is like a Hellraiser movie. You know what I mean? It's like, even, Chuck, yeah. even Chucky... Well, this tw- guy did it on his own, though. But fine, the, but still. Uh, you could, like, I'm sure he could call in favors. Do you know what I mean? Like this yeah. is a guy who's worked on so many movies because I've seen pieces of garbage movies that are like even what was that? Remember that bowling alley movie that we saw? That looked like you know a, they could yeah, oh that was a terrible. But you that had higher production done, than this. What they could have gotten rid of Heather uh, Langenkamp, yeah, which kept is basically money. The, the, the equivalent of Dan Aykroyd starring in the Twilight Zone movie for the two seconds he's That's in true. it, but less actually because that was a memorable role. And I didn't even know it was her. How much did I they didn't have know to pay it was her. her. I, when you said it again, I was like, I knew she was I in the didn't movie. I realize I looked yeah, at I know. the credits. And I, I knew she was in this movie before I saw it, and then I saw it, and I was, I didn't think about her at all. And then you said, yeah, yeah. I, had, I was like, what? <laughs> it's I mean, like, how are you much do you think me? they paid her? They probably wasted like ten grand or something paying yeah, her for like that I'm, five I'm minutes. I'm sure scene. they did, and then you not know, even five minutes. It was like a, a minute, and then they couldn't even use her for the next scene because the cop like goes back into the apartment and he's like, he talks to somebody, like talks to her character outside the door. Like, you see him yeah. open up the door and go, hey, thanks for turning the lights back on. And then he closes it. I was like, what? Do you it really? Been like, is somebody, uh, like somebody going to be watching this movie and go, hey, wait a minute. Why do the lights turn on? You know what I mean? It's like, no, who gives a fuck? Yeah. They could have used flashlights. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like... I was wondering, you think if, like, they made a movie about Pinhead, like, he was on the beach and he kept Kevin having an erection, they'd call it Shorts Razor? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wrote that down. That's very... Um, yeah, so okay, this is this. Uh, Do you think anyway? So there's a... would get along with uh, coneheads. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> when I thought my joke was bad, so the preceptor is the serial killer who's uh, killing people. I don't know why. I didn't pay attention to why he did. I think it has to do with religious shit because they, he quotes the Bible, and that's yeah, how they end up catching his brother. Um, 
they couldn't even do like the the hands inside the um uh, on the playground. I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, and they turned the word th- children's faces into the word thieves. I don't know who they were when they killed. Like this is how how little attention I was paying to the movie. How can he have killed that many people? <clears throat> Here's the thing: those scenes were like ripoffs. If you've ever you never saw Hannibal the TV show, which no, you I, should. I saw a couple episodes. I know what it is. Yeah, it, it, it reminded me of a scene in Hannibal. I think the second season where this guy made a totem pole out of dead bodies. First of all, I don't know how the fuck the guy would do it, but it was like one of the most gorgeous looking horrifying things I've ever seen on television and this yeah. just looked like so fucking watered down and cheap and it was just like like the first girl that he kills you know the woman where she says why are you yeah. doing this and he goes the first of all she's like who are you and he goes I'm gonna make an example of you and I was like oh brother <laughs> oh bro oh jeez like it was just so cheap I did like putting the dog inside her though wait a minute so when they've killed that that pedophile in the beginning did he turn into that big fat guy with an axe or was that somebody else no what Remember the the I th- like when the surgeon. Remember the surgeon comes in. Remember they at yeah. the beginning of the movie, and then they have that cheap. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Okay, the mask person came out of his back. That's what happened, and then slashed him up. The girl with the gas yeah. mask. Jesus yeah, yeah, Christ! Yeah. It's so fucking edgy. It's so stupid. Anyway, I don't know why I called <laughs> back to it. It's so bad. Uh, it looks all right, but it's just like this: a ninja warrior with a gas mask comes out and then uses these karate knives to cut him up. And I'm like, what? What is that? Like, what the fuck is that? It's just I don't know. I think <laughs> it's like cool in the sense of like character design and like, yes, it's fine, fun special effects. But it's but when you use it so script. cheaply, it's like what's the point? So, anyways, Sean Carter and his brother. Uh, I forget the, who's the guy Larry Carter or something like and that. And his wife, uh, what Beyonce, right? You were saying, <laughs> yes, the name Sean is S. Carter. Anyway, so it, sh- it would have been a, well, a lot better with Jay Z because Jay Z would have just shot the shit out of everybody. He would have had like all his goons come up and fucked him up. That's true. <laughs> like he would have been like, you would have seen Pinhead like come up to him and goes, "I have social sites." And he goes, what "The fuck you said?" And he goes, "Uh, uh, whoops!" And he like gets scared. <laughs> That's why you don't. There's and not- then it cuts to the Barclay Center. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they then, have like this big finale in the Barclay Center. And then he like he makes Pinhead his bitch, and then he t- he turns his head into a like a turntable. You know, like when you could you put that shit on the CD, uh, right. never mind the record. And, you can- and he put he has like you know each pin he's touching <laughs> it with like drumsticks and it's making different tones and stuff. He's like the fourth Blue Man Group member. His head is <laughs> his but, head is just like a big percussion instrument. So each it, pin has a different tone. Here's another si- sign that there's no uh, fucking cops. They're on, they're the only two cops. Uh, the guy Sean and his brother. Sean's supposed to be the pra- protagonist. He looks like um, he looks like Harvey Dent from the Dark Knight movie. I forget that a- a- Aaron something or whatever the guy's name is, the actor. Mm-hmm. So he's with his brother. His brother looks like uh, a cherub, like a cartoon angel, because he still has like such a sweet face. They go to this uh, oh. scene where that dead lady is like hot. The hottest chick in the movie gets killed like five seconds. You think the other girl's hot, right? The what? The, the one in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, you know the one that's like a prostitute? Hot. Yeah, she's very hot. Anyway, she gets killed five seconds. And I was, as soon as I was like, oh, she's hot. And then she got killed. I was like, oh, boy. <coughs> and um, That's what happens. Anytime there's a promiscuous woman in a horror movie, they die. So she gets killed. Anyway, so they're there. And then this third cop comes out. What's her name? The redhead cop? Oh, the detective that was the outside investigator. Oh, Edgerton. Uh, Edgerton. So um, okay. she reminds me of the, the actor Joel Edgerton. And he's the guy from um, It Comes at Night. That's like the same name, but he has a D in his name. Oh, hey, nobody cares. So she comes out. She's like, hey, guys. And she clearly has a, a badge on her belt. Obviously, right. cops have been in this room unless, you know what I mean? But they're like, they pull guns out on her. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't have cops called them to the scene for this dead body? There's no li- There's no tape. There's no other cops there. It's just them two. I, I'm like, who? Yeah. Have you not seen well, fucking just, Law and Order? Bud- that's just budget shit. No. That's not. Oh, <laughs> no. man. But it's so cheap. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. What the fuck are you thinking? Like, how many years have has Law and Order been on TV? There would be other cops on the scene. These guys, this, the, oh, man, it pisses me off. Um, <laughs> it's so fucking bad. I'm trying to look at the notes I wrote. Uh, who's the wife? His wife, the the cop, I guess um, he came back from from the war. Uh, they're not specific, <coughs> um, like Fallujah or whatever fucking whatever whoever else were blowing Imagine up. He's like, I was in Nam. <laughs> yeah, he's like still like four. He's only like thirty eight years old. I was in World War Two. <laughs> fought the Nazis. And he has like you see him with a Kaiser helmet on. Um, so his <laughs> wife looks like the lady from Parks and Rec. You know, uh, I forget who that lady yeah. is. The one that's always with uh, the lady from uh, main lady. 
Um, and she, yeah, she's I guess she fucked his brother or whatever, and he says that I, I don't care. Um, it was her birthday. He just shows up and she's like, he just gives her roses. He he could have at least eaten her butt, you know, something for her birthday. You know what I mean? Could yeah. do that. He didn't do that. Uh, he could have done something. Could have done something. Uh, that that obviously shows that he has problems. He has PTSD, and that it made sense that you know he went um, insane and started reading the Bible and started killing everybody. Um, Twenty four minutes into this film, I, I pointed it out to you. They use this female scream. Yeah, I didn't notice. Yeah, it's this. Yeah, you can you hear that it's scream? It's like the, this. The um, you said it was like the scream that's in Star Wars, right? Yeah, the Wilhelm. It's a female equivalent to the Wilhelm, the Wilhelm. scream. If you hear that scream, you've heard it. It was in the. It was in Spider Man One. It was in a lot it's of in movies. Everything. It's in everything. <clears throat> it's basically you'd hear the shit in a haunted house. Like if there's you go to a haunted house, there's a scream that I hear sometimes. I I don't think it's the Wilhelm scream, but it's in. I specifically remember it in Beethoven Two when <laughs> somebody falls off the second floor of a house and you hear like <laughs> like something like that. Like it's like this weird howl scream that you hear in a lot of movies. You sure it's not the Wilhelm? Oh no no! I know what you're talking about that. Yeah, that one where yeah, it's like yeah. the guys in hell. They use that. I I know that scream because I would I would always hear that instead of the Wilhelm scream. That yeah, one okay. I remember specifically watching in um, Broken Arrow. Uh, you mm-hmm. remember Broken Arrows with Christian Slater and John Travolta, and they, and Howie Long, who's like this professional. Oh, he's a retired football player. He's like a henchman in the movie. He uh-huh. falls out of a fuck. He gets killed in some way. I forget what they use, and they use that scream. And I was like, "That's not how Howie Long sounds." Because he's it. The, if you hear that scream, <laughs> just watch. Um, look for Howie Long dying in Broken Arrow, and it sounds right. like it sounds like a guy in hell. Like his scream. I don't know how they got that scream. They must have like hammered that guy's balls into paste <laughs> because it's like yeah! like. I want to wait. Hold on. I'm gonna play. I think this will do it. Cut it out if it's not, but I think this should be the Wilhelm scream. Let me just make sure. Okay, the Will the Wilhelm, which is not in either of these. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me just make sure it's not going to play an ad first. So I'm I'm clicking the. So the Wilhelm the scream is this like scream that was obviously used in Star Wars, but it was been hold on. It's been even before that. Here we go. Let's see if this will do it. Yeah, that's the Wilhelm, Wilhelm yeah, scream. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely heard that in Star Wars. <laughs> that's I not in this that. one, but that, that female scream, I'm sure. If you, they they also used another like female scream. Uh, I, it was after that, the first one in 24 minutes. Female that's been scream, used. Sound yeah, effect immediately 30, came up. 33 minutes and 36 scream. Uh, can you can you find that on that one? Like female Wilhelm. I could I could play this. Hold on, female scream sound effect. I'm gonna we'll play it. Let's see first, if this let me is mute it. it. Make sure an ad doesn't come up. If this isn't it, I guess just edit it out or something. But but on. um, this uh, female scream. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> what the? That's not it. I feel bad for her, but that's not the scream. Um, that's funny. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, these screams on thirty three and th- I wrote, I wrote this down thirty three minutes and thirty six minutes into it. There's this female scream that you hear in every other movie as well. This is just like. They'll hear use this, and I'm I don't have to go back and hear it. Yeah, I'm you like have really to. Curious. Um, for some reason, also, uh, 32 minutes into the film, I'm trying to think of what they showed, but I think it was the auditor. He's walking towards something, mm-hmm. and they showed two shots of his feet walking. Like it, it shows his feet, and it sh- cuts back to the cop's face, and it shuts. It shows his feet again walking, and I was like, well, "What? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, why? Why are you showing the auditor's feet? There's nothing like." Spe- like right. if he had goat's hooves, that makes sense. <laughs> right. Not regular fucking shoes. Like who? Wh- why are we showing his feet? Like I'm picking this movie apart, but it's just like as a movie, as a movie a- as it is, it feels like it's a short film that's been going on for an, like an hour and twenty minutes. Could you imagine? Yep. Hold on. See if this is the scream. One second. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. That's the scream. Yep. That's it, I just typed in female Wilhelm. Yeah, that's the scream. Yeah, that's that's definitely the. Scream. I wonder who Wilhelm is or what that means exactly. Um, did that record into your computer? No, actually, no? that's funny. There's a uh, a thing called the Wilhelm scream explained. So never mind. Um, uh, anyway, that actually record into your computer or no? I hope it did. I think so. Okay, good. Well, we'll see. But it's um, a stock thing we're allowed to use. There's it. also um, <laughs> Cenobites uh, cameos from other films, like that one that is the teeth. Chatter Tooth. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> So cheap. 
Uh, these looks like these look like kind of cosplay versions of the suits. Like they don't look like high end. They just look like high end cosplay versions. Like shit I'm telling you, you they spent half the budget getting fucking Nancy Thomas <laughs> to be in. And, and the chattering teeth one, they're so fucking cheap with that fucking suit. The chattering monster one, right? Because he has that's a great look. I like the the look of that one. He's walking yeah. towards him, and you hear like the teeth cl- uh, clicking. His mouth mm-hmm. ain't moving. <laughs> so as soon as the editor notices. That you can actually see the chittering man's face, it stops the sound effect, and then it cuts away. Like you see his hands, and then you like clicking again because they're so fucking cheap. They couldn't get a a, a machine effect for his mouth to work. <laughs> so fuck. Oh man, was that bad? Uh, that shit bothered me. Uh, yeah. And, and then when the cop first leaves the house, like he um he doesn't automatically call the police uh, uh, to tell them there's fucking phantoms that almost killed him inside of this apartment. Well, he's, he's a crazy person. Yeah, but I mean, ah, uh, forget it. This is you trying to... I mean, he's absolutely insane. And he so anyway, whatever. What so we, we, we find out that he is um, uh, the the preceptor or whatever the, the, the worst fucking title for a serial killer I've ever heard. And uh, he Please lures he lures in his wife. I thought they actually did something cool. I thought they actually killed that Edgerton character, the cop. Because I was like, oh, shit, he's, he killed her. You know, he just beat her over the head with a gun. Then I was like, nah. You know, that's yeah. not how it is. Anyway, so he brings his brother and his, his uh, cheating wife. And they get fucked up. I thought they were going to get away. But I guess since it's a Hellraiser movie, they fucked them up too. They took they, they put a claw through you them. You think he went crazy just because she cheated on him? <laughs> Probably. I think he was crazy. So it's from, really I think he was crazy from the war. Deaths. No, but... <laughs> he knew she was cheating on him because remember she cheated two weeks in on him uh, when he went to the when he left. So but he knew. I think we should blame it on her all the deaths. No, no, it's his fault. He's the bastard. No, no, no. Him too. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he anyway. So it ends that he tries to bargain by giving them uh, the Cenobites his wife and brother's soul, but they say, "Nah, fuck you. That's not how it works." So they decide to. They want to kill him, and then I was honestly I was a little <coughs> confused with the whole angel. The angel, um, okay, so the angel is um I think her name Jo 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 Feel, or I which don't know. is a real angel. Well, I mean, you yeah, know. it really is. Okay, so anyway, but, she's supposed know. to represent innocence or whatever that means. So that's why she was like, let him go, he's innocent or whatever. Actually, what she's doing, she's doing. Uh, God says, hey, let this guy go because he's he's doing, which is so fucking stupid, so stupid. Yeah, hey, I didn't really God get says, it. hey. Uh, let this serial killer go because he's so evil. He uh, scaring people to go to you know believing in God. Really, is that what it is? It's not fucking people shooting up like buildings left and right. No, it's not that. It's one guy slashing up people. Yeah, okay, that makes complete sense. Stupid ass, <laughs> dumb movies, shitheads. And plus, like when she first shows up, she's like you know she looked like um the girl from Ginger Snaps. I forget who that actress is, but I was like, Wait, which one? The, the main the, girl, the main Ginger Snaps the, girl. The sister or the or the one that becomes a werewolf in the first one? The main girl from the movie called Ginger Snaps who would be Ginger, Yeah, I know, right? but there's two main girls. Yeah, but there's Ginger. She's oh, Ginger right, oh, Snaps, right? Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so sure. I thought it was her because she had these big giant contact lenses on. Uh, and like her acting was so bad in that first scene. It's so cheap because I guess it, like, the auditor goes to heaven or wherever he is in the light. And she he's delivering his lines. like He's good, the auditor guy, because he has this German accent. And he's like, yeah. what do we do about this? And she, every answer she did is almost like she was doing like a, a table read. Like she wasn't really acting. Like she was just saying the answers back really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> she right. did better in the second. Actually, I, like, I, I don't know. They should have just had somebody else play her. Like have like a black chick or something. You know, somebody. Some like somebody different. It was, it's so funny now watching now every movie like is all like multicultural and shit like why not just have a black right. character like who gives a fuck this you know they, but Danny was saying maybe this is a different hell like they didn't want to offend like <laughs> offensive black <laughs> maybe there's like a black pinhead who knows there's like a Filipino fin- pinhead imagine and- yeah like every race has its own pinhead specifically there's like a, that there's like guy a, there's a Puerto Rican pinhead where he like takes rice and beans away from people and then like, oh there's a, there's a Jewish pinhead and the yarmulke's like <laughs> elevated up on top of the pins like, but like <laughs> it's, like, it's like an inch off the top of the head <laughs> And, they just, and you just hear that same what is, what is that phrase they say in Manhattan whenever they try to get you oh are you Jewish are you Jewish you just, you just hear that for, for, for a millennia you just hear like, that uh, so oh anyway. we have such sights to show you 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> maybe the oh geez, I was gonna say the the puzzle box is made out of Matzo's crackers, um, or the puzzle <laughs> box is a trail. <laughs> oh, vey. oh god. Anyway, so and every uh, side has a different symbol on it that you have to open. Danny's Jewish, just to let you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not Jewish, so I'm, I'm in trouble. To say these things. He's Puerto Rican. I'm in trouble. That means I, I'm a person of color. I can say that. Um, but anyway, so the whole deal is that he gets fucked, at, and then the angel lady says, "Hey, let him go." And then they show a shot of Doug Bradley looking down at the gun, and for a second, I thought Pinhead was going to pick was gonna up the gun. He was going to grab it. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I that, thought too. that would have been the stupidest shit they'd ever done in this movie. Well, that's like the Leprechaun in space movie, but that's supposed that's true, to be but That's stupid. funny though. So yeah. then he like he knows that the female uh, officer Edgerton was going to pick up the gun and shoot him, which is pretty anticlimactic but funny. But I guess that's how it works mm-hmm. out. For some reason there's justice in this movie, and she kills him, and then I guess he'll become whatever uh, shithead face in. Uh, okay, hell. can I just say something completely unrelated? <clears throat> sure. Emily Perkins, who is the sister in Ginger Snaps, plays Beverly Marsh in the original It movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that either. I remember when we reviewed it, and I was like, oh, yeah. Like, it totally did not, like... That's great. And the girl, and obviously, and also the girl from Ginger Snaps, uh, was it Unleashed, the second one? The girl who plays... The second one, yeah. The girl who plays that kooky main girl, she was in, um... Oh, what is that? That sci-fi show with the... uh, uh, Black Orphan? Am I saying it right? Or is it Black some... Mirror? No, Orphan. Something Orphan. Ah, Christ, why am I no saying idea. the name wrong? Oh, I always get that wrong because I think of Black Mirror and that show. It's something called Orphan. It's about this lady who's like, uh, who has like nine twins or some shit like that. And then I always say mm-hmm. the wrong phrase, Black Orphan. Like it's a fucking inner city like movie or some shit like that. Tatiana. Tatiana. Uh, um, Maslani. Maslani. Yeah, what is, what is she in? She's in something called Orphan. Let's, let's look it up. Uh, Something I'm orphan. It it's a, it's, I'm gonna go nuts. It's orphan a, black. Orphan black. And I always call it black orphan. <laughs> <laughs> and like that can't be right. That's not the name of it. But yeah, it she's in. Cool. She's orphan it's black. About, and she's a very good actor. Um, like I knew once cool. I saw that movie, I was like this girl's a good actor. Anyway, whatever. So <clears throat> instant justice. He gets killed. The female cop is crying, and then <clears throat> uh, Pinhead decides to torture her for whatever reason. I guess because she the angel. He was uh, his maleness was uh, he was he was threatened because he was a male. He doesn't like being bossed around by, by a woman. Angels. So he's obviously a, by, a, by a, a woman angel. No, he's less. a he's a male pig. He's like you can't take you know you I you know I relish in it or whatever the fuck he's talking about. Hell, like, he yeah, can't suffer, suffer right? anymore. So then she he kills her. I don't know how you kill a, an angel ghost. Like what's the point? Like she could just come back, you know? Well, um, she does curse him to right. She already human, told God, right? I guess. So then this leads to one of the worst. I mean, I, oh man, it's so bad. Like <laughs> one of the worst things I've ever seen. Because first of all, this movie has a lot of drone shots, like a drone over the city. Like you can make a. You I, I, could, I didn't really get what they were like. What happened? <coughs> the punishment is uh, that hey, listen, he's listen, human listen. again. Yeah, yeah. Basically, that's what it is. So listen, um, there's a lot of drone shots in this film. You know the little drones you put up in the sky, and it, it basically yeah. it makes your movie look better because then you can get these big sweeping shots of the city. This movie is mostly close ups and medium shots because they can't afford to get lo- large shots. The only time they have right. any big wide shots is when they're in like buildings and shit like that. And even that they really can't do. So anyway, they decide to use the same fucking drone. When he's in the street, he becomes a fucking bum. He's in the, he's like in the where these all these other crazy bums are, and he's sitting on the floor. And, and I th- what is, I think he says, "I have such sights to show you." And then yeah, the and now? it's done with drone camera footage, which for some reason there has to there are good drones where you could get high definition camera. This shit yeah. looks like they shot it on a on a on a phone from 1997 or something. <laughs> and he's like, uh, "I have such sights to show you." And then it it superimposes <laughs> it superimposes Pinhead's face on his human face. Like you wouldn't understand that that's fucking Pinhead. It's the cheapest shit I ever saw. I was like, this can't be. They're they they're joking with me, you know. And yeah. then the and then you can tell it's a drone because then the then the drone lifts up in the air and flies away, or whatever. And that's how it ends. And I was like, that is bad. Like, that's one of the worst fucking things I've ever seen for What's this type of movie. What's weird is the movie got really, not good, but, like, Listen, decent. maybe Revelations was that bad that they decided this Yeah, I, I think, honestly, I think 
<clears throat> everybody went in thinking this is going to be terrible because it's like the tenth. Because here's the thing: Hellraiser that's the same movie. thing. That's the same thing with the Child's Play movies. The ones that we've seen, they're getting progressively worse. But people yeah. were like, "Hey, man, Chucky's back to his prime. He's killing people." Oh yeah, Chucky's killing people. Oh man, what a great movie! Wow, fantastic! Honestly, I preferred Seeds, uh, Seed of Chucky, <laughs> by far to the last one. Oh yeah, compared to that one, it was a fucking masterwork. No, it was work. terrible. The curse. Um, and one. then Danny was like, "Hey, did you see what happens after the credits?" And I was like, "No." So then I saw it. And I was like, "Wow, what was the point?" Like it was two German Mormons going up to a door saying, "Hey, do you want to hear about God or whatever?" And then they yeah. just go into the house, and that's how it ends. Because it's in Germany now. The auditor is in Germany. Like, who gives a fuck? Who cares? This movie fucking <laughs> sucked. It was stupid. I don't. I just made my decision. It's a dumb movie. You liked it, right? You thought it was great. I didn't like it, but like, <coughs> I was, I was surprised it wasn't as bad as I expected. Yeah, it was, this is not a good movie. I don't, I don't like it. And I think you know it did have some good shit. Like, it has some decent production values. The, the, the pinhead the and the effects art, are all good. That the, guy two and o'clock did good effects. Here's the cop. The acting is all good except for that angel lady. Decent. I say, I okay, say fine. It's decent. decent. So if it's decent, that angel lady is really terrible. Um, yeah. I, I thought Auditor and Pinhead are very good in the movie. I thought they were really good. Yeah, they were great, and the, Pinhead some spends, of the effects were pretty good. Spinhead, Spinhead. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I want your love. <laughs> anyway, spin me right around. Anyway, so um, yeah, yeah. Pinhead spends sixty five percent of the movie on some fucking hell toilet. Like he's just sitting there. And uh, that would have been great if the auditor's like, hey, shit. Yeah, but that's part of his suffering, constipation. It's constant shits. Yeah, right. <laughs> he ate some demon uh, bean sauce. He has, he has shit, but it's like filled with broken glass. Oh, demon refried beans. And he goes, he goes, um, he's like, uh, Mr. Clean Whipped. All right, whatever. <laughs> uh, I, I got to imagine fucking, um, what's his face? Uh, who's Drain, Drano Whipped. <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? Um, uh, who, the hell, who the hell's the guy who wrote all this? Clive Barker, like. You tell me you can't go to Clive Barker's house and give him $10 and some gay porn mags, and he'd be like, okay, I'll give you some idea. And he'd just, it'll be fine. He'll come up with a genius idea for the movie. That's Clive how- Barker is just cashing in a percentage of every single movie. He doesn't give a shit. He, you know he saw this, and he was like, he sees right bollocks, and he was like pissed off. Uh, was he, he pissed? No, I don't know. I would hope he is okay. like if you would care what he did. he rewrote he just basically rewrote that whole um, pinhead thing as a like a he made a new version of it like try to make it even more gothic like I mean in the in the book I don't even recall pinhead being a character really he's in it for like a second yeah he he redid it uh, I, I gotta read it again it's been a forever he actually rewrote like... the novel the original novel and I don't know what what the po- it's basically like you know how um f- Fifty Shades of Grey. That woman who wrote yeah. that, she now did a book, I think, called Grey, which is the male character's version of the book, even though it's the same oh, shit God. that happens. So I think that's what he did with uh, the first Pinhead book. So Yo, have I you ever, know. like, like I, I am on this, like, writing group thing, and sometimes as jokes, like, Ooh, that's they'll, nice. post, they'll post clips of that book, and, like, even the... Even oh, the is it to laugh at it and stuff? Not, not only is it so badly written, but the, like... Things are there's typos. Things are misspelled. The grammar, like I dated a girl for five seconds, and she was like all about that book. And then I got the audio book, and I was like, "This is terrible." Like it was just like this woman reading. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, I maybe, haven't read it, but I, kind I was of like, maybe it'll joke. you know, it'll be, maybe it'll be like her hot and saying, you know, she I think got it's a, supposed to be like a fan fiction of <coughs> Twilight. It is. It was a, it was a fan fiction of a Twilight, and that woman is uh, a millionaire. She was Mormon, I think. I'm sure, and um, but you got a fan fiction of something that, and I'm sure you can find. I'm sure you can find parts of the book because she does talk about having Benoit balls Sorry, and everybody. What? Yeah, I know. No, she, I'm apologizing she, to anybody I'm offending. I know in the I'm audio, people like Twilight on here. In the audio book, she like talks about putting Benoit balls in her twat and stuff like that. And, but you got to hear What's like a Benoit ball. Uh, it's I. Uh, it's like these two silver balls that a woman puts up oh, in her vagina you know I, so I, I, she I've can. Heard of those. I heard yeah, of those. so they can like. Uh, the muscles of the vagina can get stronger. Kegels, right? And uh, and, you, and you, they, she talks about stuff like that, getting fucked in the ass, all that stuff. But I didn't get up to it. That's how bad the book was. It was just such mm-hmm. terrible writing. I was like, man, I can't even. You know, my boner isn't worth this. Um, so don't yeah. bother did, with those. Did you books. get any boner? Did no, I didn't. Job? It was so bad. It was so bad. Anyway, so um, yeah, what were we talking about again? Oh yeah, Hellraiser. Uh, I, I recommend. I recommend people to read the Hellbound Heart, which is the original. You know the book, the premise of Hellraiser. Watch the first one, watch the second one, 
Skip this. Yeah, if you see <laughs> that's, Clive Barker in the street, if you see Clive Barker in the street, just like buy him a pint and like just tap him on the shoulder and like give him a handshake and just be like, I'm sorry, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. What uh, do you want rating, I would give this movie a three out of um, twelve thousand. Okay. Three out of twelve thousand having um, nubile women with slashed off faces with enormous um, fake silicone uh, breasts, but they have to keep their underwears on in hell because nobody wants any sexual harassment issues happening. All right, I'm gonna give this a like a, a, a six. I, out oh of, man, okay. Go no, ahead. I was gonna say a six out of you know thirteen. Okay. Nah, a six out of twelve. You're very kind to this movie. A six out of twelve, though, not out of ten. Um, That's basically uh, a five out of ten. But go ahead. Don't do math in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> don't you do I, it? Don't do it. Uh, that's for Jewish pinhead to do. <laughs> Jewish pinhead. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like anything. Okay, six out of ten. Um, twelve. Six out of twelve. Eating. Eating um, people's sins with a helping of children's tears, and then puking onto the faceless, big-breasted women on the other end of the pipe. And with that, Danny, what's the final word? Gotta get a new brown wallet. The horror deconstruction. <laughs>